Hey everyone, welcome to our second workshop, automation workshop. Hello, welcome to the people who just joined. Um, hi Josh, lovely to see you back here. Hi everyone, if you just joined, we're literally just starting so you haven't missed a single thing. We're now waiting for people to join, to be here. Uh, as it happened last time, it usually takes around one to two minutes for everyone to really And And we join. are early, right? We are, we are starting we're this a minute ahead of time. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Let, let's give people, you know, a moment to catch their breaths, grab exactly. their, uh, their, grab their waters. Breath yeah the coffees yeah exactly tea people um, are also welcome <laughs> tea people <laughs> we should make a poll about that are you a coffee person or a tea person for sure <laughs> which one are you at this time coffee or tea um, oh at this time i'm being a, just a water person really oh okay okay right you know, you know, a couple of, uh, I think maybe months ago, I kind of switched to decaf, which makes mm. me happy, right? Because then caffeine is not kind of overburden me, um, right. especially with the anxiety and all. Yeah. Um, I do enjoy tea a lot. I really enjoy iced tea, which I don't know if it's, you know, a big thing for other people. Um, but now it's like it's, we're reaching summer here, right, in the southern hemisphere, so... It's just very <laughs> hot, so I'm 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 an iced water person right now. Right, right, makes total sense. Um, yeah, for me, I'm a mate person. You know that I I only drink mate, maybe some water here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, not after not after midday, so no more mate for me. So yeah, tequila. <laughs> okay, oh, that was gosh. a good one. Yeah, yeah. And, and Mexican tequilas, it's it's like oh that, that's a whole nother level. Yeah, um, actually. The last one. time I yeah, last time I went to Mexico, there was this a really cool I, I think it's kind of like a liquor made of agave plant and it mm. just tastes amazing. It was nice, 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 nice. <laughs> cool. So um we're one minute in. I think we can already get started. People will be joining, right, as we go further on. Um, and yeah, because we have one hour and we have a lot to cover. And again, this is a live workshop. We want to be doing, um, um, yeah, live process design. So welcome everyone to our second workshop uh, where we're going to be uh, automating a process live. Um, and we actually create a process for um, a client, right? So last time we did a university fund system. And this time we're going to be learning how to create an automated purchase order system with document generation. So before we go more into the into the use case, I am going to present our speakers again. Once again, we have Eugenia Langen. She's the head of solutions team. She um, creates systems for all of our customers. She's supported our customers, clients. So she's been doing this for many, many years. And we also have Caroline Fernesian with the head of customer success. So if you are a customer, you probably know her, you've spoken to her, and if you haven't, please do via the chat or the email. She is amazing. And um, the reason why she's here is because she knows um, she knows our customers, right? And what they want, what they need. So the combination of an architect expert with a Shiko user expert is a great combination for these workshops. So yeah, in this case, we're not presenting um, the, the company because the, the client uh, prefers to stay undisclosed. But basically, uh, we're, um, we're designing a use case for a floristry and event decorator from Florida, USA. It's a company of 10 employees that they provide floral arrangements and event decor for weddings and corporate events, right? So this is um, the, the use case that we're going to be doing today. And, um, and just uh, a bit more information, right? There's three kind of description points here. So they need to create uh, purchase orders for suppliers where they specify which quantities and types of flowers they need. 
along with the, the, the delivery date and the location for the venue, right? And then once the flowers are delivered, they need to say, hey, yes, I received everything, okay. And then all the information needs to have um, uh, cost related because then um, the finance team will come in and, and close the, 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 the month's financial with, with that information, right? So currently how they're doing it is a very manual process. And because they're florists, they're not you know, spreadsheet experts, they're experts in decor. So um, it's been really complicated for them to kind of track this in a manner that it serves them and the finance team all together. So that's why we are uh, creating the system, which is actually going to be quite simple according to Euge. So hopefully you're going to see it that way. Also, what is interesting is that even though it's a different use case from the previous the previous one, we're going to be using the same best practices. And this is going to be for every single process design that we're going to be doing. We're going to be following the same best practices. So this is very interesting, right? Because no matter which process you're, you're going for, always follow these three tips, right? Before starting, set a goal. Super, super important. What questions should they answer? How often should it be updated? And who is this um, data information for? So in this case, what questions should the data answer? We need to um, understand um, if all the requested flowers have been delivered on time to the correct venues, and then also the total cost of the orders placed, right? How often should it be updated? We need it to be daily and or after every form response, right? And then who is it for? We have three kind of stakeholders here. We have the operations team, which is the, the, the team that actually does the events and they need to uh, send the, the, the orders and receive the flowers. The, um, the finance department, which needs to know the costs. And then they, the, the people who are gonna be in the event who need to confirm that they received the, what they ordered, right? Now for a second tip, right? always design with a single private source of truth. So never transform your data in your database, right? So when we're doing this with EUG, uh, you're gonna be see how this actually uh, puts into the, to the workflow. So today we're starting our, our source of data. We're starting from a Google sheet with a list of products and their images, right? That's the dummy data that we were presented with. And our challenge is to not make this a list that can be editable or changed or nothing, right? This is our private source of truth where we don't want anyone to be able to edit it. Um, and last but not least, the three steps of every data process. So now we're gonna go jump straight into designing this process, which um, for those who just joined, we're gonna be designing a purchase order system for an event um, decorator company. And basically what we need to understand is bring all the inputs of data together, which is what we call connect, then transform this data so that it, it, it we, we transform it into what we need to visualize. And we know what we need to visualize because we've already set our objective, right? So if you go straight into this without setting your objective, you might get lost in the middle of it, right? So that's why the importance of the objective. And then finally, how are you going to visualize your data, right? Um, so yeah, this is what we're going to be doing. And we're going to be using Shiko for parts of it, but then also we're going to have using a lot of like Google Workspace um, tools and formulas that are not paired with Shiko. So the importance of knowing how to leverage Google Workspace and Shiko to create these automations, right? Um, so yeah, having said that, uh, we're going to jump straight into the, the demo, which is going to be Euge. So Euge, um, whenever you're ready, just let me know and I'll let you share the screen. And in the meantime, we just opened some polls. They're going to be open for some time because, um, yeah, we want to get to know you, right? Like, who are you? How good are you with spreadsheets? So yeah, just answer them as we go along and Please, this is an interactive workshop. So if you if, it's, if it went too fast or it's going too slow, you have a question, you have the chat, you have you can you can open your mic. Uh, like literally, this is a workshop for you. So make use of our time. 
we love doing these things. So please, please, please let us know what you want. <laughs> so, okay, ready to start? All right. Yeah, thank you, Steph. So I do have to confess, guys, uh, this time Steph did not let me prepare. She was like, yeah, no, I think you went too overboard last time, too many formulas, you scared everybody. Uh, so today she decided to kind of like spring up these things on me. So I'm just um, looking here, uh, the database that she actually provided me, which is basically, you know, the flower, the price and the actual image. And because, as we said, we're uh, going to go for using a single source of truth, um, I'm just going to create, I'm going to call this my main sheet, right? Um, purchase orders. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Shiko and make sure that every piece of information that I have over here is actually available on my first sheet as well. So I'm just going to come mm -hmm. in here. I'm going to create a new blank workflow. This first part, again, super simple. I think I shared this, um, this hack last time, which is basically to copy the URL because you can then click on it here and you can paste the URL and you don't need to keep kind of sifting through your workspace. Um, mm -hmm. And also, if you have duplicates, this helps a lot. Um, I don't know if Carol remembers, but we had one time the case of um, somebody reaching out to us and saying, hey, my connection runs, there's no error on it, but I go to the file and it's not updated. And turns out the person was going to a file that had the same name, but it was not the same file. So. Yeah, I remember uh, one <laughs> was in caps and the other one wasn't. So, yeah. yeah. So then, yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's, yeah, it's a, uh... all right. Just because I already created my main sheet, I'm just going to do the same to kind of ensure that the data is going exactly what I want it to go. Hmm. Perfect. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to call this something like inventory, right? Like it's theoretically, it's not actually, it should be catalog, right? Like this is the catalog. catalog. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah. These are the products that um, they actually work with, right? So then exactly. finish and save. Oh, my, my. Um, I have a bunch of unnamed things here. So I'm just <laughs> going to go ahead and name That always this, happens uh, to me. Yeah. You know what? Like I'm already used to um doing the naming after i create the first connection i feel like yeah. this is this is something that we need to work on because right now it's way easier for you to create uh the name after you have the connection uh yeah. than during so let's call this catalog let me close this thing okay so now we have catalog over here awesome perfect which is exactly what i wanted mm -hmm. now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start preparing um, a form for us to create um, these purchase orders. And you're like, oh, okay, so now you're going to create, you know, you're going to click here and say, hey, new form. Uh, not exactly, because Chico, with the same process that kind of uh, Steph was explaining of, of um, you know, what is this data for? What data do I need? What questions do I have? The forms that we have follow the exact same logic. Right. So I'm going to name this tab purchase order and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start thinking about what kind of data it's important for me. Right. So I will probably want an ID, right, for this particular purchase order. I will probably want to know the date in which this was uh, submitted, right? Because then we need to know like, okay, from purchase order submission until fulfillment, how long does it take? If we take this to the future, it's going to provide us some very interesting KPIs, right? Um, well, we're talking about events, right? So we probably need the event name, um, event date. Uh, what else would we need? A venue address maybe? Yes, because this specific client has different venues, right? Since it's an event decorator. Yeah, so, mm. and, and then this is like, 
I don't know if we should if we should call it like venue address or delivery address or what should it be? Maybe but delivery it's... address and also delivery date because maybe the delivery date is different than the event date, right? Mm, that works. Delivery date. Mm. Uh, and then let's call it delivery address. Cool. Okay, so I think these are the details. Do we need like do they work with like I don't know uh, maybe sales reps that would be the ones taking this order? how does that work do you know yeah yeah because it's a it, it, from the 10 team members i think it's like seven of them who are actually creating purchase orders for different events so there will be multiple okay. people multiple users uh creating these um uh let's just put in a field orders. called requester then because then you yeah. know who to reach out if you have a question about this mm -hmm. and um and then let's go to the products right so um, yeah, so based on our catalog, we have a type of item and the flower and a price, right? Naturally, mm -hmm. we want, let's say, we want to know the type and then we want to know the flower, right? Mm -hmm. Price we can pull dynamically. So this is, this is basically it. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, uh, how do I generate a form for that from that? Well, basically you come in here and you say, purchase order and then you click on select files i'm discarding and here i have my main sheet purchase orders and then basically i'm going to tell it that i want to pull for the purchase order once you do that you can see that it already shows you a preview and you're like mm -hmm. eugenia this is looking ugly because i don't need this id and date here Yes, that's because we did not do any configurations with that form. We just did it very raw so that we knew kind of like the fields that we wanted and what they should look like or what they should be, right? Now we start thinking mm -hmm. about what they should look like. And, and you're like, okay, but how do I do that? Well, Shiko does this by using configurations within these uh brackets right so and other things like data validation for example and stuff like that so for instance for the columns named date i'm just going to go ahead and ensure that instead of just saying automatic that this is actually date format and then i'm going to put in a validation and say that this thing actually needs to be a valid date and then done. So, and the cool thing about this feature, and this is also cool about uh, Google Sheets, is if you, if I double click now here, it's it already kind of opens for me this calendar drop down thing, which I think it's very useful when uh, yeah. doing date inputs, uh, especially like in cases where you have, at least in Chico, where we have people in Europe and then people in the U.S. and and everybody else that have different date formats. This is like really helpful. Um, totally. I'm just gonna. And also, when you don't know which date it is today. <laughs> oh yeah, that that helps as well. So now yeah. you can see that my date field is already appearing here. Uh, I'm actually just gonna finish and save this form because the 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 rest of the edits we can already uh, do with the form created, right? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to add here that this value has a default value and the default value is today i mm. think this this should be it and i'm gonna say for instance that this field right here is hidden right so so when i start yeah uh, I don't think we, we, we mentioned this but there are some lots of configurations for Shigo forms and I've just shared in the chat I all the, all the yeah, possible I was going to get there. Yeah. You're, you're providing okay, people okay, with okay. spoilers, Steph. <laughs> um, so you saw that I put in the hidden and I put in the default value and it appeared here, right? Um, naturally, you're going to say, Eugenia, how do you remember all this? And I'm going to say, hey, I don't. I actually don't. It's a lot of things to have in your mind. So I just go to support chico.com. Right, because we have an amazing team that actually invests time in and writing down this documentation. And I am so lazy that I actually don't even like to navigate the website. I just type in here for 
right? Uh, and then I get a bunch of results of like, okay, what's a Chico form? How to edit a Chico form and all of that. And I think I usually go in here and I like, I navigate internally, right? Oh, look, it's Carol over here. Um, so I actually just go into uh, Chico form configurations, right? Mm -hmm. And then I start seeing the, the stuff, right? The good stuff that we have. There is, I think, a list down here somewhere. Yeah, there you go. See? A, a huge list of a bunch of configurations that are um, available for us in here. Yeah, and just sorry to interrupt you, but no, if you click ahead. on the the bottom right, you can talk to us live. So I don't oh, know yeah. if the guys know, but yes, so you can talk to me and with my colleagues. We can help you too. We can like, for example, through. I cannot find the URL to this article. I can just come in here and um, and ask Carol. And I can do this from this interface here as well. So you can see the very nifty, discreet, elegant chat icon. So um, now that we looked into this, right, like I'm going to be referring to this uh, as a couple of, uh, as a resource, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I'm going to put in this random because I also want my IDs for these purchase orders to be generated automatically, right? So I'm just going to go back to my sheet. I'm going to say, okay, this thing that it's hidden. Also, you just put in a comma and you say, hey, it has a default value and this default value. What was the default value? Uh, random. There you go. So then I just say random. And then I'm also going to say that this is locked, which basically means that uh, somebody coming into this form would not be able to edit it. And it already says it's hidden, right? Just to show you guys how this locked thing behaves, I'm going to still um, display the date field, but I'm going to say it's locked, right? So now if I actually come in here and I sync the form again, uh, the syncing of the form is basically to retrieve the most... Um, let's say recent configurations that I did, you can actually see that now this is a grayed out field. I cannot click it, I cannot edit it, I cannot anything, right? So then that's that, right? I'm also gonna go ahead now and say this is hidden, basically because we know that the longest a form is and the more somebody has to scroll, the least likely they are to actually fill out the form that we want them to fill out. Yeah, now, especially as I said, right, these people are not technical, they are event decorators. So we mean, this needs to be as easy as we can for them. Right. And now I'm just going to come in here and I'm actually going to use the, the paint format feature of uh, Google Sheets. And I'm just going to come in here to delivery date and I'm going to paste it, right? Because I need the same configuration here. So I need this to be also kind of formatted as a date, which now it is. And I actually needed this validation here as well. So apparently the validation didn't stick. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, hey, this is actually a valid date. There you go. Done. Um, all right. So now if I come back, it's going to show me a date there. Um, this is going to be a text, right? I'm assuming text. We could, for instance, if we already had like a database of the upcoming events for which we are going to be providing flowers, we could uh, make this a drop down. I'm thinking we don't right now, right? Um, and what is it? I think we have something here that says like right text, isn't there? Drop down description default. I think there should be something. Oh, we have paragraph, right? But that's for large text fields. So I think I don't need to write anything in this one. Hmm. What I am going to do is I'm going to divide things in pages and I'm going to show you guys why I'm going to do this, right? Um, so let me just say this is page one. And I'm going to add this here as well, page one, because I think otherwise it's going to break. Uh, page one, whoops, not exclamation mark, one, okay, one, one, okay, delivery date, same thing, page one, I'm actually going to go ahead and say this is required, right, mm. because it is, we need to know the name, this is also required, right, required, uh, and I'm going to do the same here, right, page one, 
and this is also required, right? Um, and this thing, I know what you what you might be thinking, right? This looks very manual and not automated at all, but it's actually one time setup that will then save you a lot of time, right? This is, usually happens with automation. It's really hard to kind of put this time into making all these configurations there. But once you do it, you're gonna have so much time saved, right? So it's like an initial investment of time to save time later on. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Better and, do it right from the beginning. And then it actually also looks pretty, right? Yeah. Uh, so here I have like most of everything. I'm just gonna put in a blah, blah, blah. Naturally, you can put in like data validation in these things as well. Uh, in the sense that uh, if you need, for example, the event name to have a specific format, you can do a little bit of regex data validation. And as we mm -hmm. mentioned last time, you don't need to know how to write those regexes. Just, you know, just leverage your favorite AI to, to do that. Uh, and basically now here you guys can see that there is pagination and I've divided uh, them into two and you say, hey, Eugenia, but why did you do that, right? Like it's not that many fields. Well, because I'm assuming that whenever people are placing an order, they're not going to just be ordering one type of thing, right? Like it's not just I want one bu bouquet of roses. I'm assuming that they're going to be ordering a bunch of other stuff, right? So I'm actually going to go ahead and say, hey, maybe they want a quantity, right? Like if we're talking about a wedding, can you imagine just how many centerpieces you might need? It yeah. might go from like five to 50,000. I don't know. Um, so again, I'm going to go with page two on this. And then what I'm going to go is I'm going to refer back to my um, cheat sheet here. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to apply this thing over here that says grouped. Right. So I'm just going to say that these little three bad boys over here are grouped. So grouped, grouped, and grouped. And this is actually a feature that has a really cool behavior, um, which also kind of imposes a limitation to it. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sync my form one more time, right? I'm going to put in some stuff here because otherwise it's not going to let me submit, not even go to the next page. I'm going to the next page. And now you can see that there is, a, you know, like a frame over here, right? And right now I still haven't configured anything, right? So it's still allowing me to type stuff on quantity, flower and everything. Uh, but the cool thing right now is I can actually add a new group. So if I wanted, you know, one bouquet of roses, but then, you know, 55 centerpieces made out of, I don't know, orchids, I could come in here and I could do that, right? Now, as a form, we do want, uh, like one of the major things with forms is that you're ensuring data consistency. So I basically, I want to ensure that these bad boys over here um, actually follow what I have in my in my list as options, right? So as I mentioned, guys, data validation is like your BFF, right? Not Literally. only when you're using, not only when you're using spreadsheets, um, but in this case, right? Like for Chico Forms as well, because imagine you already have like a half started spreadsheet that everybody was filling out, but then you started having a bunch of errors. So all of this is kind of like half configured but you want to move it to a form so that people don't accidentally delete stuff, which has been known to happen. Um, you can simply, you know, go there, select the file and it's generated. So I'm saying it's gonna be a dropdown from a range and guess what? I'm just gonna select the range type from my catalog, um, excluding A1, uh, cause well, you know, A1 is just the header hmm. and beautiful I'm sorry, thing. Okay. Can we put A2 to A so that if you add more, you can then it we is just can, automatically right happen. now, right now it's not, it's not going to do that, right? Mm. Like, okay, it's A2 to A it's, it's selected the entire column, right? Mm. But yeah, A2 to A beautiful thing. It also kind of deduplicates because here we can see that our table has like, you know, bouquet, rose, bouquet, orchid, and so on and so forth. But okay, it's done. So now this is looking pretty. 
and hopefully it reflects on my form. And just because I don't want to keep going back and forth, because otherwise you guys are going to get, you know, vertigo. Um, I'm already going to do the next step, which is um, I only want to then show um, the flowers that are actually available for that arrangement, right? So mm -hmm. if we look at our catalog, and I'm actually going to go ahead here and I'm going to sort this uh, data, sort range, advanced sorting range has a header row and I want to sort by type. Okay. Uh, don't show this again. It's telling me this because when I run the connection again, it's going to again come back in the same order that is on the uh, source, right? Hmm. So there you go. So then we can see here, for example, that um, roses are available for a bouquet, but not for a basket, right? So I don't want the person to be able to select rose when they say that the type of arrangement that they want is a basket. Hmm. And then you're like, okay, Eugenia, but how do I do that? Well, again, it's configurations and you're like, oh my God, but it's not here. Yes, it's not. So I think there is a place here at the top. Oh no. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's here. It's here. It's called sub questions, right? So then I come in here in the, in the sub questions, right? And I'm actually going to configure that as a sub question of something, right? So if I come in here, I'm going to say, hey, this item actually has a conditional and it's conditional on the type, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say this, right? So I'm going to say, hey, this is actually conditional. And when I say it's conditional, I have to add the field name on which it's dependent on let's call it right so in this case it's type i'm actually going to type in um and that's that and then i'm going to say okay what's the the actual range of this so basically like where my where my response going to be right and the range is kind of like a vlookup for those of you that like formulas so you can see that it actually shows me the range between um, double quotes. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to say, hey, the range is catalog. And it's going to be A, whoops, A to B. Whoops, B, not B. Okay. So I think this is it, right? And... Is there a way for me to configure, Carol, you can help me out here. Is there a way for me to configure um, that this is only numbers or do I do that only via? Rejects. Yeah, via rejects. Yeah, that's what I expected. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not going to do this right now, but I'm going to say that this is a number, right? Okay. And let's see how my form is behaving itself right now. Sync form. Right, so I still have this, I still have this, and I still have this. I Next. need a date. Oh, fudge. Well, it's doing its job, right? It's uh, yeah. ensuring that I'm not missing anything. Right, and you're like, Eugenia, oh my God, now my question for the flower disappeared. And I'm like, no, it didn't. It is just waiting for you to select what you're looking for. So if I'm saying bouquet and I come in here, all of a sudden I have rose. Right. But then I changed my mind. I don't have a bouquet anymore. I want a basket. Oh, look, it cleared out the flower uh, portion. Why? Because uh, rose is not here as an option. Right. Yeah. Um, this is uh, super useful for other use cases, right? Like ticketing systems or inventory or when you're uh, doing invoices or uh, whenever you need to do this data validation. It's, it's super cool. Like at least internally, we, we use it a lot in the marketing team for for ticketing I systems. Think for a lot yeah. of um, for a lot of um, come on, Eugenia, for a lot of form usages, this is like really really useful, right? Mm -hmm. And totally. um, and I think another thing that makes it really really useful is that we do a slightly different um, approach to how we handle this data afterwards. And I'm actually going to do a submission now to show you guys this. Hmm. 
Um, so right because, now, what you what you're doing is the collect part, right? You're collecting all the data. Exactly. And, um, yeah. So this is the part that gets interesting, right? So hmm. this is showing me that I submitted an order. Here's the the ID of this order. And this order, I don't know why I have a blank case, but um, it shows me that I um, selected uh, three items, right? Because this one is blank. And mm -hmm. I have here a begonia basket, uh, a tulip uh, centerpiece, or rather 50 tulip centerpieces, and <laughs> one rose bouquet, right? Now you're like, Eugenia, but why would I want to do this? Well, that's simple, because a lot of uh, the other formulas that we have um, that allow you to do like analysis, let's call this analysis. Um, they work like that. So if I say, Hey, pull in for me, please the unique order numbers, right? It's going to pull me only one order number because it's repeated three times. Right. And then if I go ahead and say, Hey, you know, just, uh, count if, Right. And I'm going to count this range if this thing is not empty. Hang on. Criterium is different from empty. This should work. OK, it didn't work. I think maybe this thing. Equals. Right. No. Oh, hang on. I think I know something. Maybe if I put here not blank. not is blank not parentheses is blank value close close it still doesn't work mm. okay uh, if i do this with a query query this thing right here i'm gonna say select a count g where g is not null uh, group by A. I need to put in a parenthesis here. Sorry. Again, me with my queries. Sorry, yeah, you I love like them a lot. Yeah, because <laughs> you see, they work, right? Like I was doing the same thing over here, but it was giving me trouble. And I just did mm. this. And now it's showing me, hey, you know, this particular order number has three different items, right? Yeah. And I could go ahead and say, hey, yeah, that's, that's perfect. But I actually want to know the amount, like the total amount of those items, it's three different items, but how many total? So it's like 50, one, two, three, right? I could say, hey, you know, just go ahead and say some, whoops, some I, right? And then it's already showing me everything. But anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Uh, but now was... we're, we're kind of going into the transform part, right? So now you've collected exactly. the data input. And now you need to transform it so that uh, the, the the suppliers can visualize this data and the finance team can visualize this data in a way that it's visual visualization. And <laughs> exactly. And there's a lot of interesting things here, right? Because huh. you might be talking about, hey, you know, um, at, do I do like one single order per supplier, which is what we are going to assume for this example, but you could do, for instance, like, hey, you know, I have this order for this event, but I actually have one supplier for the roses, a different one for the tulips and a different mm. one for begonias, right? Mm. And here was where it starts getting cool and getting funky because mm. you can say, hey, you know, what's the supplier, right? And I, I need to display the price for this item, right? And then I need to display the total price. And you're like, Eugenia, isn't this going to break everything? Well, not really. I'm just going to say that this is hidden and locked, right? So mm -hmm. nobody could even dream about editing this from the, from the form, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, hey, this thing actually has data validation. And I'm just going to say that I only have two suppliers, right? Like one is Steph and the other one is Carol. There you go. And I'm just assuming this because, you know, this thing right here is going to um, allow me to manually select the suppliers. Of course, we can, we could do this dynamically, which is what I'm going to do with the prices, right? And I'm actually going to add one here called image, right? 
So and I'm just going to say that this is page three, just in the hopes that I don't break anything, right? So there you go. So price, I'm going to say, oh, okay, this is actually locked, hidden, and page three, right? But the thing with the price is I actually went to do a VLOOKUP. And you're like, oh, my God, how are we going to do that? Well, I have those formulas that I really know and love and all of those things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some magical concatenation. And in here, I'm going to put in array formula, VLOOKUP. And this is going to be an interesting one, right? I think I actually have to do this with a lambda. Oh, um, Kenya, don't scare us. <laughs> oh, no, it's just because when we're talking about, like, mm. if I if I do a VLOOKUP here, right, mm. let's let's start with the simple VLOOKUP. Mm. Uh, if I do a VLOOKUP here, and let's say I'm going to be VLOOKUPing, VLOOKUPing by the flowers, right? So I'm going to do VLOOKUP HH, or rather it has to be H2H, uh, and I'm going to look it up here, right? And it's going to be flower price, and I'm going to say two, and I'm going to say false, right? If I do this, uh, L1, yeah, so this is probably not the right thing. This maybe should be this thing. Yeah, there you go. So why are you complaining? Array formula. Well, because I didn't put in the VLOOKUP, right? So... Um, so if h to h equals blank, then this is blank. Else you're going to do VLOOKUP of this bad boy over here, right? Uh, range uh, index. Okay, close this. I think I forgot one. So, okay, close this. There you go. So now it starts looking for me the the prices of the of the flowers right now let's let's check if the begonia basket is actually 33 monies right so if we come here begonia basket it does say 33 so it's finding me the right thing now let's try a different one right let's see if there's anyone i think the flowers are not repeating themselves here right now which no it's always the, it's always different flowers for every product yeah okay but i mean so, this, right. this, is, this is dummy data so in their actual use case they could be repeated exactly so that's where the map would kind of help us out right mm. because in the map it would allow us to retrieve the price only for um a specific case right so mm. the begonia prices but for the basket right mm. Um, but for now, since these are unique, I'm just going to leave it with the simple formula, right? And I'm going to do the same thing with the total because basically that's what the total is, mm. right? So total, hid, hidden, locked. So while, 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 you're, while you're writing, I'm going to be explaining, right? So mm -hmm. uh, Eugenia right now is in this, this curly bracket. She's writing. The green part is actually the 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 text that's going to be in the column, right? This we learned in the pre in the previous workshop. We went through it a lot, step by step. So just make sure you watch it. And then after she closes that green part, she's starting to write the actual formula that will uh, be working in the entire column, right? So the actual formula that we're using here is the if. Um, so yeah. Okay, so now basically here I'm I'm calculating the individual totals, right? Uh, and we could say that we actually want to calculate the the total total, but I'm not going to go there because I think the map okay. formula again it it's going to be scary, but it's really useful. <laughs> um, okay. And and then the image, which is basically going to be the same thing that I did in price, but instead of looking up BC, I'm looking up BD, right? Mm. So I'm actually going to copy this because I'm like really lazy. 
I'm just going to paste it here and I'm just going to change this to image image. And then I'm going to say this is BD. And then instead of two, it's three, right? There you go. We have our, our things because now my, my goal is to use this to actually generate a document that I could send my supplier. Hmm. Right. And of course we have these prices here and you could, for instance, be auto populating them with the fixed price that you negotiated with your supplier or the actual price that, you know, they send you on a, a recent table or something like that. So all said and done, and this is good. And you're like, oh, okay, Eugenia. So then, you know, let's go back to our workflow, which right now looks a little bit like this. And, hmm. oh, I, I want to generate a new automation. And, okay, my automation comes from a Google Sheets. So now we're, got, we're going to the view part, right? We transform the data via formulas. And now we're going to create the first document that, that as we said in our objective, right? We want to communicate with create our suppliers. Create purchase orders, yeah. Yeah. Create with our, communicate with our suppliers clearly the information that we want to share with them. So now we're creating this first uh, state of visualization of, of your data. Um, so we've we've been through the three steps already in, in 40 minutes, which I, I, I trust you. You said it was going to be easy and I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. So there you go. I just, yeah. I selected the file and, and cool. we still have a little bit to go, Steph. So okay. uh, I'm going to try to pick up the pace, right? Uh, but basically, you know, we selected the source and then we want to generate a document. Right. But if we reach this part, you're going to see that there is this thing here that's called template and you can, you know, click here to learn more. As I said, we have documentation on stuff, um, but I don't have a template because I didn't do one. Uh oh. Mm. So then I'm just going to go back in here and I'm actually going to create a Google Docs. And I'm going to say that this Google Doc is actually my PO template. Right. Got it. And then I'm just going to, you know, edit this to actually look like something pretty, right? So I'm going to call this, you know, purchase order. And here's the very cool thing, right? So let me actually insert an image. I'm going to search the web and I'm going to say floral something, right? Um, I don't like these ones. Let's say floral. PNG, maybe it's, or like floral corner, uh, I, maybe this one. <laughs> you see. can create any one and then you can send it over to your designer to, to finish yeah, up for you. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I, could, I could do that as well. Right. Yeah. And um, that's, but let's just that's what I like to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm actually going to go ahead and be like, uh, let's insert uh, Heather. Right. And I'm actually going to remove this and go inside the header. I'm going to put this into the header, right? Like imagine you actually have a header image, right? Let's, let's go again, insert image, search the web, floral header. That's a good name, header. Uh, don't like it. Don't like it. Don't like it. This one is okay. Yeah, that okay. works. Insert this. Yeah, exactly. Cool. It's a bit so big. I like this one. Yeah, okay. it's 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 big. It's it's big, but that's fine. I mean, we could say, you know, let's just you know do a little bit of this, and then I think I could align the centralized. There you go. Light. And then I'm just gonna call this purchase order, and and you can go, you know, big crazy on this. I'm just gonna put this uh, script and I'm going to say, this is really, really big. I want it 36. Cause you know, I have some, uh, visually challenged people in my team. So I'm going to call them that. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put an underline here and you're like, okay, Eugenia, but so far you only made people things pretty. And I'm like, yes, that's what I was doing. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and start a table. And I'm going to say that, uh, this is the table, right. And yeah, I'm going to say, item type 
uh flour. again right this is like putting a bit of time into doing it once and then never doing it again <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's the advantage oops i forgot mm. i forgot that this should actually have another column here so insert column to the right i'm going to call this total uh, value right and here's where the pretty things start, right? Because now what I'm going to do with this template is I'm going to tell, hey, Chico, uh, you're going to use this to generate like all my documents because I don't mm -hmm. want to have to copy paste values in the document ever again in my life. Um, and I'm going to do this for everything, right? And again, you're like, oh, Eugenia, uh, how do you know that you need to put that into that? And I'm like, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, and I'm going to go refer to my cheat sheet once again, and I'm just going to say, hey, document, right? Uh, and then it says, hey, group to data when generating documents. Okay, this is this this sounds like what I need. Oh, look, it's mm -hmm. it looks exactly like that. So group start, group end. So that's exactly what I'm going to put in here. I missed an exclamation mark. So I'm going to put in group start. Then I'm going to insert a new table, which is also going to have like four things. And then just below that, I'm just going to say, hey, this is where the group um, ends. I think it doesn't have the S. Yeah, it just it, it's just end. OK, group start, group end. And then you're like, OK, Eugenia, but then what are you going to put in there? How is Chico going to know that it needs to populate it? Well, now I need to be like very aware of the stuff that I put in here because what I put here as a header is exactly what I need to put there in the document. And sometimes copying pasting can be a uh, one time. <laughs> it can actually be a good idea because then you don't have any problems of like, oh, I put in a space or I put in capitals and here in my document, it's like not capitals, plural versus singular and whatever. <laughs> the only time copy pasting is, is allowed, right? In a Shigo, exactly. In a Shigo workplace. Exactly. So, and then I'm just going to call this total. Um, so now everything is here. And now, naturally, I don't want it to be just that, right? Let me just um, format, clear formatting. Um, I also might want to, you know, say something like, oh, what's the order number, right? And then I know that this is called ID in my file. So I'm just going to put ID here. Um, and all of these other informations that are important, right? Like uh, delivery, delivery date, date. Or, or let's call it due date, right? Because I like due date. Due date is pretty. Okay. And I'm just going to come in here and I need to um, come in here and say, hey, okay, delivery date. All right. Uh, squiggly brackets. Um, and I can go ahead and, and say stuff like event name. I'm just I'm not gonna put everything because it's just you know duplicating information. Yeah. Event. No, this is this is only for the suppliers thing. as well, right? So they don't yeah. need to know the event. I don't know, or, but um, I yeah. think I think it's important here to illustrate that you have flexibility on doing this. And yeah. depending on um, the amount of data that I have to put here at the top, what I usually like to do is. Um, split it into two columns but again this is a template you can you know recruit your designer uh to help you out with that but um that's what it is and we can just come in here and say order submission date right and just say this is date right just in case you know it might be an important information because we want to make sure that people have like enough of a deadline to look at Oh, I forgot an important thing. We have images. What's the use of images if we don't use them? Right. Right. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add a column here. That's, well, that's not exactly what, where I wanted it, but that's fine. I'm going to call this image or maybe nothing. I don't know. I'm going to leave it blank mm -hmm. just because right now I don't feel like adding a call, a title to it. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this thing out of here, put it here. And here I put an image. And what is the column called? Well, it's called image. image. Well, <laughs> Congratulations. 
And again, you might ask me, Eugenia, how the heck do you know that you need to put in those squiggly things? Well, I have a reference, right? And I think my reference is not here, right? So if I come back and say, hey, oh, look, add images to document an email. So it's, it's the first one. That's uh, that's smart. Oh, there you go. It looks like image picture. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I'm putting, image and then the actual thingy thing. Okay, so that's that's enough back and forth. Um, let me just copy the URL of this document. I'm going to go back to Chico and say, hey, Chico, thank you. I actually remembered that I uh, needed to create a template. Here's my template. Um, I'm going to call this purchase order. And another thing that gets interesting here is you can actually add something we call smart tags. And you're like, Eugenia, what is a smart tag and why would it be useful? Well, because you can actually add, like, for instance, the ID of a particular order and like, for instance, the event name or whatever makes sense to you. You have to remember these are a bunch of documents that are going to get generated in a folder. So if you have only one document to generate, this doesn't make sense. But if you generate like, I don't know, 50 documents, 100 documents, it gets to a point where you actually might need to go to that folder and say, hey, I'm looking for the purchase order of X, right? Of course, you can do that by the spreadsheet as well, which might be easier. But just in case, I always like to kind of keep the standard and make sure that the nomenclature of my um, of my files makes sense. I need to pick up the pace because we only have another five minutes. Um, That's okay. What I'm actually what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and I'm I'm gonna create a folder, right? And I'm gonna call this folder PO, right? And uh -huh. and I'm gonna say this is where I want my um, they created PO to go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, that's where I actually want my documents to go. I'm going to use this to, you know, check generated files to make sure that it never starts from the top and it just, you know, actually uh, continues to where it stopped. And I don't think I need anything else here. And I'm just going to go finish and save. Cool. And it's running. Yeah. And hopefully I mean, some match. Yeah, go stuff. I know. I know you say you, you, you know you're you're trying to pick up the pace, but I when we set out to design this this workshop, I didn't think we were able to go into be to do the entire collect to visualize of this use case, right? So um, oh, if it was if it was up to me, like we could we could do a second workshop, like continuing this uh, use case, yeah. right? Because as we add more data to this you can have mm. different visualizations, right? Mm. Now, naturally for this purpose, the problem was actually generating those things and actually having lists of those orders so that um, the flower shop could kind of like stay organized. But mm. I mean, the sky is the limit. Uh, imagine like tomorrow the, the, the owner or the manager, he wants to see how the fulfillment is going because he needs to assess if a, if a partner is being a good partner or not. Oh boy, what did I do wrong? So again, errors, right? It's saying uh, a group element in the document could not be repeated. Please try again and remove any grouped uh, elements or contact support. What the heck does it mean? Do you think it's maybe <laughs> because I have this the blank space. over here? Yeah, Let's maybe. see if I, if I, did I do anything like wrong in the sense like event name? Hmm. Um, so, I, I guess better. you can check the template, Eugenia. Yeah, yeah, I should. Give me a second. Group. So uh, while, while you check that thing, uh, we're going to launch a last question of a poll where we want to ask you all, like, what a, what type of, of um, use cases would you like to see us automating next, right? Um, so, yeah, just if you if you can answer, I mean, we, we want to invest a lot more time to creating these workshops and and um, uh, also for you, for all of you. So if you could give us a little bit of your insights, like would you like to more on inventory, more on finance? Like what is it that you would like to learn on before we, I mean, we're gonna finish this out, but we also wanna respect your, your hour. So feel free to stay, but um, please, if you can answer that, it would be super useful to know. Um, what to do next and if you are a customer remember that you can get these processes designed for you right in these workshops um cool okay thanks rebecca for that uh we'll definitely take it into account 
and um, why? Yeah. Mm. Um, but anyways, so there were a couple of issues, right? Uh, one of them was with the line breaks, right? Like I hadn't properly added line breaks uh, between the tags for group start and group end. And mm. as a result, we were kind of like trying to interpret everything and parse the document as if it was like all in a single row. And that was breaking a lot of things. And another thing that was an issue, which I think some of you saw me catch this during the, the end of our, our session, was that some of these added columns that I created and that are actually fed by formula, I had forgotten to add the grouped tag in them. And if you actually look at them, they are part of a group. And I'm actually using them in the template. We can see them here, right? Like price and total. Um, and, and this meant that it wasn't able to, you know, process this. I'm just going to go ahead back to our uh, familiar thing. And I'm actually going to run this right now. Dun, dun, waiting, dun. waiting, waiting. <laughs> and now there's no tension anymore, right? Because <laughs> we just tested this. <laughs> uh, you know, spoiler alert yeah. is going to work. It's going to work. But again, like we said, right, we're not scared of bugs. Whenever there's a bug, we just go for it. And if you do encounter it while you're using Chico, you can just see at the chat that's right there at the bottom right of your screen. And you can reach out to us and we'll happily look into any situation that's happening. So, yeah, it's a great time to learn that we have a chat with very available people to help you out. All right, 40%. Oh, yay, it ran. Now I'm just going to come in back in here. Uh, nifty feature. I have now here the timestamp of when this document was generated and the actual URL from the document. And one thing that's important to notice, right, while we are talking about three rows, because they're actually a part of the same um, order. Documents. Exactly. You will notice that the URL is actually the same. You can see it's the same ending because it's actually one single document for the three of them, right? So here I actually get all the details that I had added, like the order number, the due date, so like when this needs to be delivered, um, what the actual product is, right? A basket of begonias, it's actually two, and this means it's the total of 66. The centerpiece for tulips, this is, you know, we're doing 50 of those, so it's 1,100. And the same for the bouquet, bouquet of roses. And here at the bottom, I did add a line break just because I think it looks cleaner. Um, I added the order date just to ensure that we have enough time, right? It might be something that we want to ensure when we issue out the purchase orders that there is enough time between the actual order date and the fulfillment of it. So Lovely. this is working. And yeah. if we were to say, hey, you know, um, we want this to be triggered, right, based on the form submission, right? I can say that it's uh, from the purchase order. And then if I actually come in here and I say, hey, this is going to be a fishing trip, right? And this fishing trip is going to happen on Saturday. And this is B42 Wallaby Way. Sydney, Sydney, uh, Dory is requesting and they actually just want one centerpiece because it's just going to be one huge table, All right? And, but, you know, every participant is actually going to get, you know, a basket of begonias. And we know that we have, I don't know, 10 participants, let's say, All right? And then I submit the very nifty thing that happens is upon submission, Chico already knows uh, to trigger the whole workflow. Um, it will uh, retrieve this, right? Which is not necessarily good because I had, you know, hard coded some, some stuff over here. Um, uh, and that's what we were talking about, the sole source of truth, right? So it just replaced a bunch of things. I'm going to replace it again, right? Um, with the images that I actually had replaced previously. And uh, and now it's going to go ahead and, and generate uh, those documents uh, for this latest uh, fishing trip order ID. So 
Perfect. So yes, and and as uh, as next steps, um, we would add a, a automatic email, right? Uh, to send oh, yeah. these documents directly on form submissions to the supplier, right? So literally, this company went from doing lots of things manually to on a single form submission, already having the generated document in the inbox of the supplier. So that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, and you might actually want to ask me like, hey, but uh, how how would you do it? Sorry, I just I fixed this because first because I had replaced the URLs, it was giving an error, but mm -hmm. now we can actually see the documents. Um, there you go, the centerpiece. Yada yada. Um, the way I would go about this is like here we have like this field for the supplier. What I would do is I would probably have another database that would just have, you know, supplier and then email, right? And then, you know, for Steph, for example, right, we would have her email, like Steph at supplier.com. And what I would do is the same way as I, I did with these kind of dynamic hidden fields, mm -hmm. I would actually go ahead and... Um, create a column where I would just do the VLOOKUP because if I come in here and I say, hey, this is the, the, the thing that I want to edit because I actually want to add another step here. Let me close this. And I want to send this via email, right? You're um, going to send three, the same document three times, right? No, I, I don't. I, I'm not because it knows that it needs to be sent only once. And if you, oh. if you want like my my thing to do this right like my go-to process because i don't like i don't like sharing like docs because you know docs are pretty easily easily e uh, okay pretty easy to add it that's what i meant um i usually first convert them into a pdf right and then you know i usually have a pdf folder right that is just mine you know um that's fine save changes oops i forgot to run later um i'm gonna let me finish the edit edit uh before i i save it and then i add a new step and then i just say hey you know uh just send this uh via email and the the really cool trick here is you're able to retrieve the emails dynamically from a column from the original file so imagine like in supplier right i had another uh, column that was like supplier email, right? In this case, I didn't add the, the column here, but it would be there somewhere. Um, I could select that particular column and use this to already send them an email saying, hey, uh, new request to fulfill. Fulfill. I think that's how it, yeah. how it's written. And then I can go yeah. ahead and even say that, you know, this is the ID and I can, you know, say due date really big. So then they know that's important and uh, put in the delivery date, right? And I could even go ahead and add um, the details of that order here if I didn't want to mm -hmm. generate the document, right? I just feel like the having the documents is really good if you're just, you know, going to print out, have it with the shipment yeah. and all of that. Um, and then I usually say I want to add the files as the attachments and not as links to the drive just because. Mm. And for right now, I'm actually going to use, you know, a, a custom recipient because, you know, test uh, at supplier.com. This is going to yield me an error uh, naturally. And uh, I'm just going to go and save these changes. Right. I'm just going to say run later. And what I'm going to do to ensure that it actually runs and delivers an email that I can show you, I'm just going to remove this part right here. And I'm going to run this now. So, so let's see how, how it actually behaves. It should, you know, uh, turn my things into PDFs and, and share them via email. Let me start closing some tabs over here. Yeah, and also like... Um... This is one one part of it, our process, right? Then, if you want, if this this company wants to continue, they can they mark that the order arrived, and if they want to continue, they can share the finance part with their finance team on a different spreadsheet, 
And if they want, oh, they can connect it to the inventory system. And there's actually and like a lot of very cool things that they could do. They could, for mm -hmm. example, right like assuming that they have different suppliers fulfilling the same order they could actually have separate spreadsheets for each supplier and mm -hmm. actually just notify the supplier when a new item that they need to fulfill comes in mm -hmm. right it's all about how you manage your data and how you handle this and then you can actually set this up so now if i come in here um you can actually see um, and it looks kind of funky. Let me do one trick right here to show you guys, right? I'm clipping all of these and you can see that for the first one, it didn't happen, right? Like they didn't generate the PDF because it's using these, uh, these columns as controllers. But for the second one, you can see that even though, um, here you have, you see two documents in the column of the generated PDFs, you already see a single document, right? And then if I come in here, I can see that the document is actually the one containing naturally the details that I want it to contain, right? And let's go one extra step because you're like, okay, Eugenia, how do I know that then the email was actually sent? Well, the, the hack here is that you can actually see this in your outbox, right? So if I come in here on my sent emails, I need to have that email as a sent email. Oh, look, it's here, right? And it's showing me, I don't know why this did not kind of fill out. I need to investigate. But um, it shows me the the thing that was actually sent. And it, 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 it even shows me the link to the actual um, file PDF. that is actually the, atta the attachment, the PDF attachment. Cool. So. Epic. So, yeah, that's the whole workflow. Uh, and again, many, many options to go from here many options to add to the spreadsheet as the company grows they can add more spreadsheets add more columns and the system will easily adapt to their growth right so yeah super interesting use case many many um ways to design it or to apply it and uh yeah thank you Kenya, for your time and caroline as well yeah thank uh, you everybody thank you See you on the next one.